This is Business Week Armenia, CivilNet's weekly business digest. Here's what you need to know this week. More than 2 million tourists have visited Armenia in the first 10 months of this year, smashing the country's all-time record for yearly visitors, with two months in the year still left to go. Fresh figures out this week from Armenia's Tourism Committee, an agency overseen by the country's economy ministry, show just over half of all visitors this year came from Russia. The number of tourists is still likely to rise substantially through the end of the year. Russia's Izvestia newspaper reported over the weekend that Armenia has become the number one foreign destination for Russians planning to travel during the upcoming New Year festivities, with an analysis of airline ticket purchases suggesting about 9% of Russians who are planning a holiday trip have chosen Armenia. Echoing that report, the head of Armenia's tour guide union told Russia's Sputnik news agency this week nearly all hotels in Yerevan are already almost fully booked for the holidays, with the majority of bookings coming from Russia. Last month, Economy Minister Vahan Karobyan said he estimates each tourist on average spends $1,200 while in Armenia, meaning visitors to Armenia have likely spent upwards of $2.4 billion in the country so far this year. During state budget discussions last month, Karobyan said the government is planning to earmark nearly $33 million next year to promote Armenia as a world-class travel destination, marking a more than six-fold funding increase since 2020. The head of Armenia's tourism committee, Sisian Borosian, stopped by our studio last month to talk about how she and her team have developed an unorthodox growth strategy centered on word-of-mouth promotion and guerrilla marketing tactics. You can find our full conversation with Sisian Borosian up now on civilnet.am. The International Monetary Fund is poised to expand the line of money it makes available to Armenia under a short-term financial assistance instrument by 50%, following a review of the country's economic progress. In a statement Tuesday, an IMF review team recommended increasing the amount of money available to Armenia under a so-called standby arrangement reached last December from $48.6 million to $72.9 million, pending formal approval by the fund's executive board next month. The three-year arrangement is precautionary, meaning the money is to be made available only in cases of urgent need. Notwithstanding the unfavorable global economic environment, Armenia's strong growth momentum continued in 2023, with the economy growing by 10.5% in the first half of the year. Supported by robust private consumption and services trade, inflation has remained subdued, the IMF said. Overall, the fund is forecasting 7% economic growth in Armenia this year and 5% growth next year. Continuing, the IMF said it welcomed the Armenian government's efforts, so far at a cost of more than $100 million to support the roughly 100,000 people who were forcibly displaced from Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia in September, saying the plan appropriately accommodates refugee support while ensuring macroeconomic stability. Last year, Armenia's gross domestic product grew by an eye-popping 12.6%, the highest expansion rate of any country in the region, largely on the back of massive inflows of capital and labor from Russia and soaring trade between the two countries. In September, the head of the IMF's Middle East and Central Asia Department, Jihad Azur, sat down with us to talk about the fund's work in Armenia, the crucial issue of compliance with international sanctions on Russia, and more. You can find our full conversation with Jihad Azur up now on civilnet.am. You can also check out our latest interview with Vahan Karobyan, the economy minister, who sat down with us this week exclusively to talk about his vision to attract world-class investors to Armenia and turn the country into a regional high-tech hub. Our full conversation with Vahan Karobyan is up now on our website and YouTube channel. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.